Okay, so today is Cinco de Mayo, or May 5th, and we're talking with Dr. Jean Hovey about conjunctivitis in cats. Um, thanks for doing this again, Dr. Jean. It's my pleasure. <laughs> so, what is conjunctivitis? Well, t conjunctivitis simply means inflammation of the conjunctiva, which is the kind of the, the lining tissue, the mucous membrane that covers the inside of the eyelids and the surface of the eye. Okay. And in our communication through email before we set up this interview, you had mentioned to me that there are a number of cats that have conjunctivitis nowadays that didn't have it before. No, not exactly. Pretty much all cats have it. Oh, okay. So, for some reason, I was under the impression that it's it's more prevalent nowadays. It's not. Uh, no, all most all cats are exposed to it. Um, mm -hmm. As kittens, it's so common. It's just one of those infections that's around and pretty much being born uh, guarantees that you'll be exposed to it. Now that the thing that we have to to separate out is how many cats are symptomatic, and that that number is going up. Okay. And is that where herpes comes in? Well, most uh, most conjunctivitis is caused by a herpes virus. Rarely by other viruses. Uh, Calisti virus is one. Um, there can be a, a lot of causes of conjunctivitis, um, but the herpes is the most common one. Other things that could... Uh, could be caused in it, though it include um, congenital defects such as uh, the Persian faces where the tear ducts are, are not f formed well or they're absent, um, okay. scarring from injury. There's, uh, you know, there's a number of things, but I, u I used to um, send my ca all the cases that didn't respond to, to initial therapy to my uh, veterinary ophthalmologist down here in Denver, and I, I kept getting the reports back: herpes virus, herpes virus, herpes virus. So I ran into to Dr. Chafkin at a luncheon, and I said, "Geez, man, are they all herpes?" And he said, "Yeah, pretty much all." Mm -hmm. So it's pretty unusual to see other causes, and herpes is almost always complicating it, even if there's something else that started it. Okay. And, but the other the other thing to note is that if cats didn't, weren't exposed, we kind of give it to them when we give the rhinotracheitis vaccine, which is uh, rhinotracheitis is just another nicer name for herpes. Okay. Um. So, what are some of the signs that your kitty has conjunctivitis? Well, often though, you'll just notice them squinting one eye. Oh, okay. Uh, there may be a discharge, and it can be any thickness or color. It can be watery. It can be goopy. It can be green. It can be clear. It can be yellow. It can be white. Um, there, you may notice that the eye looks puffy and swollen and red. Um, not all cats will have all symptoms, and sometimes they're very subtle. Uh, the squinting is a is a big one though because that shows pain. Uh, squinting is a sign of pain. Okay. So that's definitely when you want to get on it. Okay. Um, and so what do you do? What do you mean by getting on it? What are the options? Well, as you know, viruses are pretty much impossible to kill. Um, you, you, you know, antibiotics are not useful. They don't help. Um, sometimes Vets will prescribe antibiotic ointment um, and uh, for the eyes or, or um, some kind of tear solution. Those generally also have a steroid in them to get the inflammation down, which reduces the pain. It's a very small amount of steroid, but you have to remember that steroids suppress the immune system, so y y you may be kind of uh, working at cross purposes by suppressing the immune system in the eye, you may actually make it worse. So you want to use steroids with caution, but if the cat is very uncomfortable, it's certainly a valid, uh, valid thing to do. There are, there are a number of things. Well, let's go back a little bit and, and talk about why so many cats have conjunctivitis. Okay. You know, why are so many cats symptomatic? 
meat packers have gotten very, very good at skimming every last single molecule uh, of meat off the bones. So, so now what you get is lower quality, you know, chicken meal or a byproduct meal or something of that nature, but it's really not a good quality product and there's less meat than ever. So that's why you'll often see uh, secondary protein sources like corn gluten meal or other uh, other cheaper sources of protein, byproduct meals, meat and bone meals in, in the food. And those have less meat. And the key to this is that meat has a lot of lysine in it. Lysine seems to be protective or preventive of herpes virus. It's been known for many decades in humans, and uh, it's, it's been used as a treatment for kitties. What, um, let me think for a second here. I'm getting, I'm getting wound up, Jenny. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, the thing about corn and corn gluten meal as a protein substitute is that corn is low in lysine. And over the years, as more and more corn has been substituted for more and more meat, that's where we start seeing problems. The kitties who are on low quality dry food are gonna be deficient in lysine. And I think that this is a big reason why we see more and more uh, symptomatic cats because there's less and less lysine in the food and more and more opportunity for the herpes virus to, to get a foothold and flare up. Okay. So, isn't one of the... I feel like I, I've been told that you can give lysine to your cats as a Absolutely. supplement. And so is that, yes. is that one of the treatments for herpes? It sure is. Um, the dose of lysine for a cat with an active herpes flare-up is a thousand milligrams a day, one full gram. That's a lot. Yeah. Um, the good the good part is you you can get lysine at the health food store in capsules at 500 to 1,000 milligrams, and you can just mix it in with their their wet food. It has a mild, slightly salty taste. Is all. Okay. Um, it's it's very palatable. Most cats don't notice it. And for an active flare-up, you give a thousand milligrams a day for five to seven days. And then you can just routinely add lysine at about 250 milligrams a day uh, as a supplement to prevent, you know, to supplement the deficiency and prevent further flare-ups. Uh -huh. It's very, very safe, and, uh, and it's pretty darn effective. Okay, yeah, I, I, for some reason, I think one of my readers has told me about that, um, but it's this is why I love doing these interviews with you because now I understand why it's lysine because it's not in the you know the meats. Um, right, it right. Is. It's not nice to fool Mother Nature. And, <laughs> uh, you know when we start feeding carnivores uh, corn-based diets, this is just one of the many problems that that will crop up. Yeah, that makes sense. Now. Um, in your article on littlebigcat.com about feline conjunctivitis, you mentioned also that essences can be an important part of, of treating herpes flare-ups. Yes, yes. Well, the, the, the key is stress reduction because these flare-ups are, are very often caused by stress. Um, we see a lot of this, you know, in, in, at certain times of year, like right after the, the uh, Christmas holidays, we see a ton of cats coming in with this stuff because, you know, it's been a stressful time. There's been visitors, there's been parties, people have been gone, people are coming, people are going, and uh, there's a lot of activity. There's a, maybe a tree standing in the middle of the living room that, you know, cats don't like change. Right. And the holiday season is very, very stressful for them. So that's why I recommend flower essences. Um, Spirit Essences actually has a holiday stress stopper, which is which is good. After Fourth of July is another one oh. uh, that that can be used for because fireworks and you know people.
people running around. It's uh, Fourth of July is pretty stressful on on cats. Yeah, I I think it can be stressful on dogs too. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, a lot of dogs get totally freaked. Yes, this is, can can of course be used in in dogs too. Yeah, my mom's dog acts as if he's in trouble um, during fireworks. It's kind of sad. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, they don't know what it's coming from, and they take it very personally. You know? Yeah. <laughs> um, um, I, all I can picture is his little face like, what did I do wrong? It's so sad. Um, I know. Why are you yelling at me with these <laughs> loud noise? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Poor little guy. I know. So uh, I sent you an email the other day about my mom's cat, Pemus, who... Um, I see probably once every two weeks. I don't see him very often, but, um, for some reason after I'm with him for a little bit, his eyes become super watery. He's not squinting. It just looks like he's been crying, but there's no red to him like there would be uh -huh. in a human. Does it go away after you leave? I don't know because I said to my mom, you know, does this happen? And, and she's like, you know, Jenny, I, I don't really look at his eyes all that often. I can, you know, pay attention to it, but I don't normally notice it. Um, and unfortunately, the last incidents where that happened, she was leaving for the evening, so um, she uh, couldn't keep an eye on him. But yeah, we should keep that an would, eye on him. That would be it, that would be interesting to know. And okay. you had asked about potential allergies. Yeah. And Dogs and cats, you know, we think of, of watery eyes and runny nose associated with hay fever and uh, inhalant allergies. And it's very unusual for that to be a symptom in cats. Mostly what you see with an allergy is gastrointestinal symptoms or skin symptoms. It's pretty rare for an allergy to cause uh, to cause that that particular symptom, so it's probably not that. Um, okay. You know, I my I have two cats that, uh, and I've only seen this in one other cat, and I have probably seen ten or twelve thousand cats in my career. <laughs> uh, their nose runs when they purr, and uh -huh. it's not that there's discharge coming out of the noses. It's actually the nose leather, the the pink part. Yeah. That secretes water and it may be something like that that, that uh, that's happening to your mom's cat that it's just it's a pleasure thing because he's you know I mean if the if the nose leather can run I assume the eyes can run and some cats just have these little idiosyncratic behaviors there's no particular reason for it um, and it's not harmful it's just kind of more a curiosity thing but it would be interesting to know if it only happens when you're there uh, and it goes away quickly when you're gone. And it may, you know, it, uh, it's probably one of those things we'll never know completely for sure what's causing it, but it probably isn't hurting the kitty. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm definitely adding it to my list of things to ask the animal communicator the next time I talk to her. Oh, yeah, let me know what she says. I will. Do you think that... Talking about the nose le leather and, and purring in association with that, maybe that could be a correlation with his watery eyes. Is that something that could happen later on in life? Because I don't recall him ever doing this as a younger cat. That's a good question. I don't think I noticed that when they were kittens, but pretty young. Okay. I, I noticed it. Okay. Um, we talked in the in the article. I talk about Willard water, and Willard water is really interesting stuff. I've looked on their website. I have no idea what it is or what it does, but it, I add it to the to their water fountain, and because uh, one of my cats has uh, Sundance has flare ups. And as long as I put Willard water in their water, he really is pretty good. He just has a little, uh, he has, you know, eye bookies in the morning. Yeah. Every morning he comes in and has me pick his eye bookies 
I don't notice it too much with the other cats. They don't seem to have such a problem. And some that hasn't had a, a real flare-up in years because he's been on the Willard water constantly. Yeah. Um, so that's a really, it's a really interesting product. You can get it from vitacost.com, pretty cheap. Okay. Uh, you can get it at health food stores. Uh, Vitamin Cottage has it. Um, so, you know, it's, it's not that expensive, but it's not, you know, it's not like completely cheap. But what I do is uh, I use an ounce in a gallon of water and then use that to refill their bowls with. Okay. So that they so that they always have a little bit. I don't know what it does or why it works. It does work. Um, there's also a homeopathic remedy uh, from a company A E U R A Ayura. I don't know. Um, I, I couldn't tell you how to pronounce it, but they produce homeopathic remedies for herpes in humans, and I have seen this stuff absolutely work miracles overnight miracles wow like, um, one of my one of my neighbors um, we when I lived up in Jamestown I, the second floor was three apartments and the next door apartment Bill and I would just leave our doors open all the time and our cats would run back and forth and you know that was that was a lot of fun for them and they got a lot of social interaction and when he got uh, two kittens one of them had really, really severe uh, conjunctivitis, so he was miserable. His eyes were puffy and red, and he had, you know, puff-looking goop running down his face. It was really sad. He was obviously in a lot of pain. Yeah. And, uh, and we put him on this stuff. It's, uh, it's about 50 bucks a bottle, I think, but you get 100 tablets, and you take one tablet and put it in a one ounce dropper full of water and you use a few drops of that uh, in their food and uh, what, just once or twice a day and you know so 50 pellets will last you I mean I bought one bottle years ago and I've used it for clients cats I've used it for my cats and I still have a bunch left so it's uh, it, it's very cost effective and it's really terrific I haven't ever seen anything that works like as well and uh you know, when we started uh, Snickers on it, he cleared up immediately, and it was just great until Bill ran out, um, you know, and it was the day before he came over to get more, and, uh, and Snickers overnight flared up horrible. So it's a palliative remedy. It's not curing anything, but it is palliating, and it's keeping poor little Snickers uh, real comfortable. Okay. Okay. Um, I haven't been able to find that online, so um, can I send you an email to see if you can find it? As a oh, reminder? yeah. I haven't looked for a long time. I, I, I figured it was probably still there, but I'll check it out. Well, I could have spelled things wrong. <laughs> yeah, it's a funny word, and it, it's kind of coincidental because Ilurophile is the name for cat lover, and it's the same root word, oh. it's, uh, you know, the same f first few letters, so I always found that very coincidental, although they do not advertise it for cats um, at all. Okay. So. Okay. You know, um, what's interesting that I don't, I would think this might be correlated is one of my, you know, goals is to get more cats off of dry food, so I highly encourage yeah. it anytime someone writes in to me with a poopy butt problem or whatever. And um, the the readers of Floppy Cats that have made the transition with their cats, one of the things that comes up often is that their cats don't have any eye gookies in the morning. So it makes me wonder if the canned food has more lysine in it because of the additional meat content. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. It's, well, it's more natural. Right. And it's when you're putting, uh, one thing that I, over the years I've learned is very true is if I eat a lot of sugar, I will catch a cold. Oh. You know, it's, it's when you eat sugar, uh, it suppresses the immune system. Well, corn and other grains convert to sugar in the body very quickly. So a, a high carbohydrate dry diet is basically uh, Fritos and Twinkies. Okay. You know, and uh, with the emphasis on it, 
Twinkies, and it's, it produces a lot of sugar in the body, and I think that's a tremendous stress on the immune system. Yeah. So that, you know, and, and when you calculate the protein content, that's a good point to bring up because people don't understand. They look at the, the uh, dry food, and it'll say 34% protein, and they look at the canned food, and they'll say 10% protein. So obviously the dry food has more protein, right? Right. Wrong. Right. Uh, it's, you have to calculate out the water, and it's a simple calculation, but, um, you know, we can give we can give people a link to it if we if we need to. But what is important about that is that canned foods tend to be even if they say ten percent protein, that is really about forty five percent protein on a dry matter basis. So it's much higher in protein, and the ingredients tend to be a little bit better quality because it's harder to disguise bad ingredients in a canned food than it is in a in a dry kibble that you know is made with a dough that, you know, you don't know what's in it. You don't know if there's, you know, circus elephants or um, German shepherds or whatever. Right. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't like dry food for cats at all. Yeah. Um, and, and certainly, you know, when I travel, uh, you know, the cat sitters leave a little bit of dry food out. And I do notice when I get back, you know, it takes a few days to, um, to reestablish their, uh, you know, their their balance, and Sundance usually has some some of that issue. Today he was fine, so I've been back since the Wednesday night. So it just took a couple of days to get, uh, you know, get get him back on his normal diet. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Huh. One other thing I've found that works pretty good for this, for me, <laughs> um, is. And, and it's actually working for the cat. It's called redox signaling molecules, and um, the product is called Asia. And uh, it's you can actually use it directly in the eyes, which is what I do for myself. I have I have dry eyes, so when uh, when that when that's bad, I I use it directly in my eyes, and I I mix it with the the cat's food. So I I wasn't having my cat sitters do that because it's just out of one more. Right. Complicated step to, you know, because when I make their food, it's a big production, and yeah. I, you know, I don't like to leave people with that much detail that they have to go through. So, um, you yeah. know, so that they're also doing better on that account well, as well. Well, good. Yeah, I I understand what you're saying. Sometimes I, um, I start adding up everything I do in a day. I'm like, I can't ask someone yeah. to do all this. Um, yeah, it's it's hard. It's really hard, you know. When you have, I have four cats, and uh, you know, and they're all older, so they all have little issues. And uh, you know, it's what I what we do just out of habit. You know, you try and write it down so somebody can follow the steps that you take every day. And it's like, holy cow! I can't ask somebody to do all that. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, we do. We do spoil them. Yes, we do. Um. So last night on Flappy Cat's Facebook, I posted that you and I were having this interview today, and if anybody had any questions, and one of the ladies commented that um, she thinks that her rag doll has conjunctivitis, or has, has had it a few times, and she thinks it's contagious in other cats. Is the contagious part more the herpes thing? Yeah, but it's not contagious in the conventional sense because it's so contagious they all have it. Okay. It's just whether they have symptoms or not. Okay. Um, the Another question was to ask about feline herpes and if there are other solutions be, besides lysine. So we've covered that with the Willow, Willard water, right? And then... Right, right. And the, and the homeopathic remedy and the redox signaling molecules, um, you know, nutrition, of course, that's the, that's the basis, you know, if you're, if you're not supporting the, the cat nutritionally, you're going to have problems, and this is just one of the obvious ones that surfaces quickly, and, and people should take that as a hint to get their cats off the dry food, because that's, uh, you know, they can't heal when they're getting that kind of food. Right. Um... I'm going to read this other content or co 
comment um, just to see if you have anything to expand on it, but she said, um, conjunctivitis versus herpes flare-ups. One of mine has a lot of flares uh, manifesting in eye squinting, inflammation, and water watering slash gooping. She's on a daily regimen of lysine and rarely has them anymore. And if she does, it's about 75% less severe. So I think that kind of covers what you've already talked about, but um, do you have anything to add? Well, once a cat has herpes, they have it for life. It's a, it's a virus that, that lives on, the, uh, on nerve endings, and it, as long as you can keep it dormant, you know, norm, a healthy immune system will normally keep it under control. Okay. Uh, conjunctivitis is just the Latin for inflammation as a conjunctiva. It's a descriptive term. It isn't the disease itself. Okay. A herpes virus flare-up. Uh, the symptom is conjunctivitis. But, uh, you know, the, just the word conjunctivitis doesn't imply anything about cause. Okay. But, it, but most cats, for most cats, it's, it's, you can pretty much assume it's herpes until proven otherwise. Okay. Um, well, that was it. My mom asked about allergies, but that's, <laughs> that's because of famous. Um, yeah. And oh, the, uh, the one other thing you, that you can do nutritionally, of course, is antioxidants. Okay. Um, because this is an inflammation and antioxidants are real good at getting rid of inflammation. Okay. That, that's good to know too. Um. I don't have anything else. I feel kind of silly because <laughs> it's only 30 minutes, but if that's what it is, that's what it is. Yeah, I think I think that pretty much covers it. It's a, this is a very misunderstood thing, you know, and people tend to get quite upset when we accuse their cats of having herpes because, um, you know, it has very negative connotations in people. But cold sores are herpes virus, and they don't imply anything about your lifestyle. Um, and it's... It, those happen because those are the nerve endings that it lives on, um, and it 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 just happens to really like the eyeballs in cats. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and I completely agree. I think um, Charlie and Trig had, I think, an issue when they were kittens, and the um, I don't know. I think yes, I think we were put on. She the vet wasn't sure if it was herpes. So she gave me some new, like, lysine chew for them to chew on. And, yeah, we um, some of those. <laughs> yeah. And I was, like, I was so offended that they would have herpes because I associated it with like, a sexual disease. <laughs> right. And it's, you know, I mean, it's, it, they have it when they're kittens. I mean, they have it before they're ever um, grown up enough to have unprotected sex, which, you know, what are, you, what are you gonna do with those cats? They just <laughs> won't wear a condom, <laughs> you know. But it's a, it's, you know, it doesn't have any social connotations at all. It's just something that, you know, it's kittens. Kittens have it pretty much at birth because their moms all have it and their grandmoms all have it, and and uh, you know, and like I said, then we vaccinate them for it, and it's a modified live vaccine. So. You know, we we can be giving them something that could actually activate the virus. But you know, it's it, I you know if it was up to me, I wouldn't vaccinate them for it. Uh, the vaccine does not prevent disease, obviously, and uh, really it only it only reduces the severity, and it's not really all that good at that either. So I'm not sure, other than tradition, why we're still vaccinating kitties for for the disease because you know good nutrition and uh, you know indoor enrichment for kitties and and play therapy and all the other stress reducing you know um, activities and, and things that you can do to keep them from being bored or stressed or you know let, kitties should have some interaction they should have they should have activities. You know, normal cats, uh, a cat in a natural state is a hunter. You know, they're going out and they're getting their food. You know, so maybe treat filled toys, that kind of, you know, Kong toys for cats they have, and they're called um, slim, slim cat balls are pretty good, and you can put little treats in there. You can put 
or green ace or whatever you want in there. And then the cat has to bat the ball around and, and work to get at the food. Although Spencer has learned to lay in one place and bat the ball from one paw. <laughs> He is the world's laziest cat. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I mean, all the things that we normally do for stress reduction, all the things that we normally do to uh, keep the immune system healthy, you know, the best defense is a good immune system. Yeah, absolutely. So, in listening to you talk right now made me think of, um, it, if my cat doesn't have herpes, giving them lysine wouldn't hurt them, is that correct? Correct. Is there any reason why you would would go ahead and do that if they didn't? Well, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right. It's, it's just gonna it's gonna be an added step for you in preparing their food and an added expense. Um, you know, if if you don't mind that and you want to really prevent it, but you know, if you're if you're doing other things right, your cat should not have a problem with herpes. Most cats do not. Okay. You know. When and when they do, it tends to be chronic and very difficult to get under control. But it's possible, and once you have it under control, then the preventive measures we've talked about should really minimize any any future outbreaks. But you don't know. You know, maybe your maybe your neighbor's house is under construction or something. You know, that's stress. That's noise. That's you know trucks and workmen and hollering and you know uh, when a, the stress is in the be in the eye of the beholder right really if your cat thinks he's stressed he's stressed right you know and and stress is a big big factor in these flare-ups yeah so, and you know you you go off to work you don't know that fire engines were roaring up and down the street all afternoon or you don't you don't know uh, that's i say that because my cats actually i moved into a, a house in inglewood and it turned out that it was on a snow route so this there were snow plows involved it was also a major route for police and fire so you know when i was at work all day i wondered why puzzle was hiding in a closet well you know when i moved i found out it was because it was it was a very stressful place for her because of all these, you know, these unpredictable things that would happen on the street. And when I finally uh, quit my job and was home all the time, I noticed what it was. It's like, oh, I see, you know. So then we then we moved to the mountains, and it was all good. <laughs> uh, but they like that move too. Um, so. I know that you mentioned you could buy lysine at the drugstore. Um, what do you think about the chews that I mentioned that my vet gave me? Oh, well, let me look at them. I think I think they have like 500 milligrams of lysine. I mean, it just depends on how many milligrams you need to keep the... Uh, I have so many treats here. But are, are chews just like an easier way for humans to deal with it? Well, it could... It could be, but, you know, chews are not, they don't have the greatest ingredients either. Right. You know, a lot of times they have sugar in them uh, as a preservative, and it's just, you know, if you want to be lazy, that's fine, and, uh, you know, and you don't want to open a, a can and sprinkle a capsule in it, well, you know, your, your cat doesn't have good odds of staying exceptionally healthy. Okay. You know, it, having a having a cat is work, you know. If you want them to be as healthy as they can be, that's going to require some effort on your part. So, you know, if it's too much work to sprinkle a capsule into the wet food, I don't know what to tell you. Treats are a way to keep the cat comfortable, but you're never going to regain health that way. Yeah. Well, and I also feel like it's an opportunity because I remember when she gave them to me, she said that, you could only get them through your vet, so I felt like it was a way to make money, too. Oh, you know, the markup on food and treats is so pathetic. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't give a lot of credence to the money-making theory. I think a lot of vets want to provide something that's simple dimple for people who don't want to be bothered. Yeah. Uh, I think that's more, the, that's more the issue is convenience than cost. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay, 
Well, is there anything else? Uh, no, but I guess I go up offhand. Okay, well, thank you. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I think we covered a lot, actually. I do, too.